After I did my live stream for Laura, all about uh, getting creative with macro photography, light and water, I got contacted a couple of times with people who said they love the stream, they love the, uh, the images, but unfortunately they can't do it because they don't have a macro lens or a decent setup. I'm here to tell you, you don't need a decent setup to do this type of photography. So in this video, we're going to be taking the 400D for a spin and we're going to be doing some water drop refraction photography. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. So as I said previously, you don't need expensive equipment to do macro photography. So in this video, we're going to be using the Canon 400D to do water drop refraction photography. This is just to demonstrate that you don't need the latest, greatest equipment. You don't need a macro lens. All you need is a set of these. These are macro extension tubes. What these are designed to do is to go in between your lens and your camera body to move your lens away from the camera body and thus enabling that lens to focus closer to your subject. So to start with, we need some subjects for our water drops. So what I'm going to do is similar to what I showed in my presentation, I'm going to take a petal and we're going to put a single water drop onto this petal. Okay, so let's use the memo clip holders. Get these from Amazon. Dime a dozen these things are. Next we need something in the background. So for that I'm going to use a yellow Jabora Daisy. So we're going to bring in our specimen holder. These for some reason are no longer available. So I will be looking for alternatives to suggest to you. So we have a petal with a Jabora Daisy in the background. And for safety, because what I have noticed on some images that I've been noticing on the internet, people have gaps around the edges of the flower they have gaps in between petals that they're using so just to block out any of that we're going to be using a background behind the jaboa daisy so that background there will stop any of the wall or the background that's in my studio coming into the image so it'll look like it's all one piece of flower what i want to do now is introduce a, a drop now with the water i have no glycerin this is just plain water except in fact the water i've been using to keep the flowers fresh Plain water, nothing else in it, no glycerin, nothing. You don't need any of that. If you want syringes, check eBay or Amazon. Just type in syringes and you'll, you'll come up with a lot of options. So I want to place this drop right on the edge. What I tend to find is instead of putting one big drop onto the petal, put one little one and then add another one, little one to it. And that builds up your drop just like that. So that is our scene set up. You see that water drop just there. So let's grab our extension tubes now. And again, like I said before, they go in between your camera and your lens. So I have the kit lens on here. Let's be honest, it's not the best lens in the world. In fact, I mostly use it as a paperweight. But, but if you're new or a beginner, this might be the only lens you have. If you have access to the 50mm f1.8 Nifty 50, all manufacturers make it, um, Nikon, Sony, Canon, they all have a 50mm lens. That is a fantastic lens to start macro photography with. Uh, if you have it too close to your subject, you see too much of the flower. If you have it too far away, you see a surround around, your, you'll see the background around your flower. Now obviously this background here can help fill in a little bit of that background, but ideally you want the whole background filled in with the flower. That is what we are trying to do. So again, we're going to position the flower. So I'll let it right in the middle. Uh, it's roughly in position. So I'm going to try focusing on the drop first. And what I'm looking for, I want to see if the shutter speed is too slow because I am on wooden floorboards. We are going to get a little bit of vibration in there. But yeah, we are getting a little bit of vibration. That's okay. Go to the next step which is using a torch to light the background and that's going to adjust our exposure so now we are at we're at 1 40th of a second on our exposure let's take another picture and don't be afraid to experiment and take multiple pictures so i'm not 100 percent happy with the framing on that now on my esr i could simply crop and reposition after in post in lightroom with this one, it's only 10 megapixels, which was great at the time when it was released, but I'll be better off repositioning the actual camera itself. Let's do that now. 
So I want the drop in the middle of the frame and then the petal coming out of the corner of the frame. Okay, let's take another picture. Ah, much better. Getting a little bit of a hot spot on the actual drop itself. Let's take another one. What I'm doing is I'm moving the torch underneath the drop so that we don't get a highlight on the actual drop itself. And because I've moved closer, I need to adjust my exposure again. But now at 1 50th of a second. And it's really that simple. You really don't need expensive equipment to get these type of shots. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep adjusting the focus and then I'm going to take a series of pictures and in Photoshop I'm going to combine those into one image that you can see here. So I'm going to put my f-stop up to 8 and I'm going to focus in the middle and again we've got to alter our exposure and all I'm doing here is I'm just photographing the very center of the drop. That's why I put it to f8 so it's sharper. So now I'm focusing on the back of the petal so we're going to take another picture and the reason the exposure is changing is because again I'm moving the torch around so if you do have a holder for your torch then I would recommend you use that but not everybody has them so I'm not going to use anything like that in this particular video and once you get used to doing this you can do it quite quickly and I would recommend you do it quite quickly because as we're doing it the drop is getting smaller and smaller okay so what I've done now just for a a little bit of a change so I've turned the petal very slightly so it's at a different angle I've moved the flower closer in which means we are not going to be needing that background now and I have put the focus point to be in the water drop itself let's take a picture of that one okay for this I want to go to f5.6 because again we've moved the background closer to the drop so it's going to be in focus and we don't want that so there you go, you don't need expensive gear to do water drop refraction photography. This setup here probably costs maybe £200, if that. That's if you haven't got the camera. If you've already got a camera and a lens, you only need the extension tubes, which cost about £30, which is roughly around uh, $45, $50. So again, 400D, kit lens and macro extension tubes. You don't need an EOS R. You don't need a macro lens to start doing this type of photography in your house. And with us all being in lockdown, it's beneficial just to grab yourself some extension tubes and just start playing. Because you never know, you might get into it that much that you do want to upgrade to a dedicated macro lens. Here are some images from this session. These images have been edited in Lightroom using my macro preset. There you go, water drop refraction photography on a budget. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. And as always, I'll see you on the next project. So in this video, we are going to be doing... Uh... So in this video, we are... So in this video, we are going to be doing... So... Now, for anyone who's noticing, uh, the complementary colour to purple is actually yellow. So we're going to be using complementary... So we are going to be using complementary colours. Let's do that again. I, yep, <laughs> I forgot what it was. Now this drop might necessarily, if you're um, new. So now I'm focusing on the bat, bat. <laughs> so now I'm focusing on the back of the pedal, pedal. So there you have it, water drop refraction photography on a budget. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. What am I saying? <clears throat> now this is the part you don't see on the YouTube videos and that's I have to run through the whole thing again the b-roll for this particular one I'm going to use the uh, the lower lens let's see what that's like at video shall we of course I do need to take the lens cap off come off it everybody's done that Absolutely, anyone who says they haven't done that is a liar.